Welcome back to Up and Adams. I'm Brandon Marshall, and I'm taking over this show because Kay was almost late, and there's a penalty for that in football. It's a penalty for that in football. The show starts now! <laughs> <laughs> Building. That's all I need to say. No, Kay's uh, in I the am building. an athlete in the house. I almost was late today. Oh my goodness. I thought you were going coming in on, on Zoom. What are you doing in LA? I would have took care of you. So we came out. We always come to LA, yeah. right, and visit cool people. So we sat down with Reggie Bush and a few others. How while is we're Reggie? wrapping up season three. He's phenomenal. I love him. And he opened up. What do you mean? He opened up. Reggie's chill. Yeah. He's not Hollywood. He just lives in Hollywood like you, so don't get Hollywood on me. I just got But he's Hollywood. like real chill. Reggie's always been that guy in the locker room. I played with him in, with the Dolphins. To see Reggie like open up was pretty cool. Um, how do you get people to open up on I Am Athlete? Every time somebody comes on, you see a bit of a different side of yeah. them. What's your strategy for that? I think first you slide in the DMs. <laughs> so you're like, yo, Reggie, <laughs> can you come on the show, yeah. right? They respond. Because it starts there. You set the tempo in the DM. Like, what kind of energy are you on? Okay. Right? And so when they sit down with us, if I'm being honest, it's I think there is a, a skill and an art to what you do. Mm -hmm. But where's this locker room? We're, we're literally just capturing the conversations that we have in the locker room, right? I think people want to sit down with, you know, us. You know, you, me, the Pat McAfee's of the world. Yeah. You know, people want to be more unapologetic and more real. The world. Seriously, I love it. like nobody want to go into these stuffy studios anymore with people with suits on. They want to sit down with you. It's, I mean, you're you're not wrong, and you're here, and you are always honest. So you don't have to ever preface anything by saying if I'm being honest, because you always are. And I want to get into uh, a couple storylines around the league. But first, there is a game tonight. Right. We're kicking off week three, Who's right? Who's playing? <laughs> Brown Steelers. Any thoughts? Oh, Brown Steelers. The Steelers wins this game. The Steelers win with yeah, Mitchell win. Trubisky, or are they calling for Pickett mid game? Well, it's uh, Coach Tomlin. Coach Tomlin, he doesn't get rattled. He's a real leader, right? So any other coach, maybe there's three coaches in the league that stay true to their game plan, yeah. right? Coach isn't going to listen to the noise. He doesn't care. He's a true leader. He's going to stick with Mitch. That was his guy. You know, maybe, you know, sometime this year we see Kenny. But Coach Tom is going to stick with Mitch. Oh, Why? Think, because he's they, more seasoned. I think they lose this game. Kenny Pickett starting next week. Well, first, they're not going to lose this game. They're not going to lose this there. game. Okay. Well, the other side, the Browns, they had a players-only meeting already. Already? That's not After good. After two week weeks. Two, week two, they had a players-only only meeting? Now, I, I, I kind of know what that means, but talk to me about Have you ever been to one? It means nothing. Okay. It means nothing. You know how many times I called a players-only meeting? No, I want to know. Front, and then all the guys are sitting there like, oh, what does he have to say? Or you had other guys, you know, in the front talking. And it's just like... It goes in one ear and out the other. At the end of the day, just do your job, right? Like, for us to come together and have to push each other to practice and do those things, well, what the hell are you in the NFL for? Yeah. Right? Like, just do your job. So if you're in week two and you're having a players-only meeting, you that's a problem. You've got some leaders there. Like, you got Miles Garrett there. He's he's really honest about that's being right. frustrated with his team, too. So when he speaks, you'd think it'd go a long way. Okay, so let's say you're the starting defensive back. Yeah. Right? Nowadays, starting defensive backs, you're getting 15, 20, 20 million dollars a year. Yeah. I need to motivate you, Kay? No. Do I need to motivate no, Kay I'm making 20 million dollars a year? Marshall has on. Absolutely not. Yeah, right? that's, that's not the good. Pr that's the problem. What we want is, you know, in those meetings, like, look, guys, we're not executing. We're not doing our job. When we're talking about effort, we're talking about want to, that's a problem. That's a cultural challenge, right? We should only be talking about production. I'm sorry, but this, we're talking about a locker room that has the coach of the year, Kevin mm -hmm. Stefanski. So what does it say about the coach to call a players-only meeting? Well, nothing at all. I mean, you know... If you're you, saying culture is the coach, correct, too, right? Correct, but, but, you know, as a coach in the organization, you do love this stuff, right? The players taking control of the okay, locker good. room. That's when you really have a good team. My thing is we shouldn't, we shouldn't be talking about culture we shouldn't be, be talking about effort right i just want to i just want you to understand like look it's covered three i'm supposed to be in the curl flat right this one i messed up because i took the cheese they ran a five yard route in front of me so i jumped that now they put an in route behind me i was supposed to be there i know this we talked about it all week so i just want to reinforce the x's and o's the execution part of the game i don't want to be talking about i don't want to talk about are you is this is this guy showing up on time Right? I don't want to talk about why isn't he running to the ball, loafing. It's either you got it or you don't. If yeah. you're having those conversations, I, I think you're out of the conversation around 
you know, good team or great team or contenders. So, but Steelers are winning, in your opinion, because of their coach, because oh, of Tomlin. It starts there. It's a trickle-down effect. When he walks into the room, Coach Tomlin is the same person or in the building. He's the same person every single day. Yeah. Right? And he doesn't care who you are. Right? He's going to just hold you accountable and he's going to push you to your greatness. That's the amazing thing about Coach Tomlin. And he doesn't care what's happening. There's always a way. Find a solution. That's what makes him great is just leadership. Let's keep the head coach talk going here on the show because on I Am Athlete, you had a uh, vibrant conversation about Pete Carroll celebrating and saying outwardly that winning over Russell Wilson was rewarding. What did you make of that? And you have to listen to him on I Am Athlete because it right. was incredible. Well, first, uh, I like Coach Pete Carroll. I study Coach Carroll, right? Two guys I study in the NFL when it comes to leadership, totally different styles. Bill Belichick and Coach Pete Carroll. Okay. Bill Belichick, walk in this building, do your job. I don't care about all the other stuff, right? Pete Carroll, raw, raw guy. You want to be there. The energy's at an all-time high every single day. My first time interacting, well, my second time interacting with Coach and free agency, when I left the Miami Dolphins, the, when I left the Denver Broncos to go to Miami Dolphins in 2011, the Seattle Seahawks offered me way more money and they wanted me to come play. This was mm -hmm. Coach Pete Carroll's first off-season free agency, right? And he wanted me to come in. And it was awesome. He took me to a Snoop Dogg concert, so we had this bond that started from back then. Who went to the Snoop Dogg concert? Coach Carol. And I. You and him, just, right. just the two That's of right. you? What no, was no, there was like? a couple other people around too. It was awesome. So anyways, fast forward to years later, um, Coach Carroll brings me at the, the, the tail end of my career, and we're sitting in this meeting, and, he, and, and we're talking about the Darrell Revises of the world. We're talking about all these amazing corners. Okay. Like, Brandon, it seems like you prepare a little bit different, a little bit more when it comes to these guys. Like, Coach, I do. I have a notebook on Darrell Revis. Like, if I'm playing against Darrell Revis, I may start my prep work three, four weeks out because I got to get ahead because this dude, if, if, if I don't come to play, I won't catch a ball on him. He's like, well, no. You have to approach every single game the same. That's the wrong attitude. That's the wrong mentality. Let me show you what greatness is. Every single day, be the same person. So I'm saying all of that because you're playing against Russell Wilson. Everything you preach and everything you stand on every single day. It wasn't the same. It's like you just totally contradicted yourself. You got a quarterback that led you to a, two Super Bowls, and now there's obviously other people in the organization, mm -hmm. but you got a quarterback that was like this with you. He was a phenomenal leader, not only in the locker room, but also in the community, and now he leaves. He's gone for freaking three months, and this is how you treat him? This is how you act? What about the relationships? And then you got Richard Sherman, and you have other guys that like K.J. Wright, I played with K.J. Wright, mm -hmm. love K.J. Wright, and they go on their podcast, and they talk about their teammate that way. Um, I just, that just didn't sit well with me. Those are some of those things I think you, it stays in house. They know their challenges. They know their problems. Some things just stay in the locker room, and I think that was one of them. What, why do you think Richard Sherman has such an issue with Russell Wilson? Well, I don't think it's just Richard Sherman. I think it, it, it's always been defense versus offense, right? We're talking about, you know, that legion of boom. Yeah. It's top five defenses of all time. And you know? is it that they didn't get credit for what they did or that Pete Carroll didn't help them as much as he could? Well, first off, when it comes to the quarterback position, every quarterback is coddled, right? Every quarterback gets special privileges. <laughs> <You're saying. laughs> it is, you know, like right. we know this, right? It's special privileges. So when you look at what Richard Sherman is saying, it's basically like we're coming out here, we're busting our butts, and then when we get in these meetings, you may call us out. But then in turn, you know, Russell may throw a pick and you may not say something to him. So it was always this back and forth between Russ and defense. Um, but at the end of the day... But together they won a Super Bowl. They won a Super Bowl, right? Can we celebrate that? Uh, declare victory. Right. They won a Super Bowl. Right. But everyone has their... It, it, he's such a polarizing character. But I see what you're saying. Like, you know, you should... Pete Carroll's philosophy as a coach is play every game the same way, even when you're in the Super Bowl. That's right. Even when you're deciding whether or not to put the ball in Marshawn Lynch's hand, keep it like this. Mm -hmm. And I think Bill Belichick sort of feels the same way. It's every game, That's every right. all four quarters are the same, but this one meant a little more to him. You had stability and in your the organization. the publicness of it's ugly. Yeah, but you had, you had stability in your organization for 10 years. Yeah. That's something to celebrate. You had a guy, That's didn't true. get in any trouble. You had a guy that was just, he echoed what you were saying in your team meetings in a locker room all over the place, yeah. all over the, the dang on city. Yeah. 
right? Come on. But you can say and what you want now, and so can Richard Sherman because he's no longer in that locker room. So that's you're right. saying that's a sacred space. It should be in-house. Until you're not in-house anymore, and then you can sort of talk about it. Well, my thing is this, right? If you go back and listen to what Coach Pete Carroll said, he was like, you guys figure it out. You know why this was special. And then, and then you have guys out there ex-players coming out saying, oh, yeah, coach was hot. Coach was saying all these other things. Yeah. We, we never seen Coach Carroll like this. So what are you saying, Coach? Why don't you come out and say what, you're, what you said? Because you started this conversation. How do you really feel? Tell us. Right. Right? I just don't like that. Coach Carroll's a phenomenal leader. He's done a phenomenal job his entire career. Russell is a phenomenal leader, phenomenal quarterback. You guys did something special together. Keep that stuff in-house. And then there's the gifts flying around and the memes and all the, like, Doug Baldwin's getting involved in all of that. Really? I mean, there's a lot. I, I didn't think see we, that. I don't know. It might be completely unrelated. Messy? But people are connecting some of those uh, some of those things to each other. But I think you're right to celebra de cele celebrate, declare victory. You know what, I'll, this is the last what? thing I'll say on yeah. this. Okay, I played 13 years in the National Football League. I had 17 different quarterbacks. When I got to the Seattle Seahawks and I walked in a building and there was, you know, I, you know, you feel some of that, right? I'm like, you know, you're the alternative? You want to play with the guys I played with? This is Russell Wilson. We're talking about the most winningest Jay quarterback Cutler out here through catching strays. <laughs> no, I love Jay. Thank you, Jay. Jay tar 180 targets a year. I can't complain against I our know. guy Jay Cutler. Smoking Jay, kidding. I love you. I'm just kidding. Jay. I love you. Come sit with us. And, you know, I don't know. He'll come out. LA tell me, tell me this. We'll move on a little bit. What, if you could pick a locker room to be in, culture-wise, get in the rock a lot-wise, right now, if you could play in one of them, which one would you pick? Oh man, I would the Buffalo Bills. They seem like they have a, they have fun. I, I play. I love playing with those type of uh, quarterbacks, right? Like they're on schedule, but they also know how to make a play where it's like, hey, this play is broken down. Let's go. Love Josh Allen. What makes him special? Um, his relatability, right? Oh. His relatability, talent-wise, he has all the all the all the traits, right? Big arm. He's physical. High IQ. He's coachable. He's great there, right? He separates himself from a lot of guys in the world when it comes to that. But a lot of those guys, right? Like, you look at Aaron Rodgers, right? Like, it took a lot of work for Aaron Rodgers to be sort of relatable, right? Like, you understand, yeah. like, some guys, we had, remember Brett Favre? Brett Favre, when he played with the Jets, he had his own office. He didn't even get dressed in the locker room. You, sometimes you see wow. these quarterbacks, they walk in the building, it's like, oh, that's our quarterback, right? Some of these guys, the Eli Mannings of the world, the, the Russell Wilsons of the world, you know, the Josh Allens of the world, it's like, they, you're just a guy. You're just cool. He's sitting in the locker room. He may be playing ping pong with you. Right. You know? Some of these guys like, I gotta go watch third down and short. 70% of the time, they're going zero. Yeah. I gotta go in the office. Like, no, bro, like, sit here and talk with the guy. You guys. can tell that with him and Stephon Diggs, right. that he's very, he's disarmed. He's, he's one of the guys. And that's important. That's right. Relatability matters when you have, especially when you have, I mean, I just like how chill he's being with all this pressure. You brought up. So much pressure. You brought up the, you know, our podcast, right? And how we get those convers, you know, how do we get those guys to open up that way? That's Josh Allen. Those conversations that we have on our show, Josh Allen will sit there for an hour yeah. and, 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 and fit in. Some of those quarterbacks will come in and be like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. And they'll walk away, right? Because they're just on a different level. So that's what makes Josh Allen special. You mentioned Aaron Rodgers. I mean, you're talking about things being in-house. Did you see what he said about Amari Rodgers last week? This whole thing about how he's not, you know, where was he? How, he was asked how he's fit in the offense. and. Right. He didn't, I don't think he wanted to lie. He's an honest person who's done you know, a lot of work on himself to be open and vulnerable, and he's like, he's you know, not involved, and that's all I have to say on that. Is yeah. that, like, like, how do you handle that if you're a player, Mari Rogers? Is it being, being put in the public too much, the fact that clearly there's something there? Yeah, no, I think, um, again, the quarterbacks are special. Like, yeah. you know, you play with some of these quarterbacks, a Peyton Manning or a Tom Brady walks in, it's like, it's almost like you're seeing a guy, like, oh, my goodness. So... As a younger wide receiver or younger player, when your quarterback says something like that, or it's almost as if, like, your dad is talking to you, right? Huh. So you just, like, he's right. right. He's always right. right. I just have to figure this thing out. Yeah. You take onus. You take the responsibility and try to find a way to get into the off offense. Sometimes the, those uh, public conversations push guys to their great, greatest potential. And you have to know that as the leader, and he's been a leader long enough that he and, gets it. And he has to know... 
if I say this publicly about this teammate, well, this t can this teammate handle it? Will he break? Some guys will break down. Yeah. Some guys, it will actually actually push them to greatness. That pushed me to greatness. Hearing Jay Cutler saying, if Brandon Marshall doesn't get it right, you know, we're going to have to move on. You got to get Jay Cutler on I Am Athlete. We've been talking, but ah! Jay, come on. I would love that. Come on up in Adams. I try, oh, I to, try to get Jay. Jay's very, Jay's like chasing a, a, a girl, like a, a guy or girl like on, on Instagram Jay's, doesn't want to Jay's commit. weird, let's just say it. He's weird. Jay, Jay you're, you're weird, weird, but we love Jay, you. We, lo we love you. We love you. Uh, you know, wide receivers aren't so bad. We talked a lot of quarterbacks. We're, we're, well, maybe we'll bring you back at the beginning of next segment. Uh, mm -hmm. But I wanted to ask you a couple things here. Are your boy Justin Jefferson? Yeah. Best wide receiver, Darius Slate took care of him. Now, you in the rare time that you had a bad game or a poor game uh, that wasn't, you know, your expectation, how did you talk your way out of that? Like, yeah. how, you know, what would you say to Justin Jefferson after that game? Nothing, right? Because, like, you know, sometimes we see some of these guys, whether it's Justin Jefferson or DK Metcalf or Tyree Kill, we put them on this pedestal and it's like, oh, my goodness, they are the best in the world and they dominate every single matchup. That is not true. Those guys got to this point because they learned how to fail forward, fall forward, yeah. right? They learned that. You think Justin Jefferson never had a bad practice or never had a bad game or I'm never sure had a DB get to him? And then also as a wide receiver, if I'm being honest, you know, we're going to watch film and be like, well, and these are the things that a lot of, you know, casual fans may not see or understand, even people around the league because they're not watching the game, they're not watching all 70 snaps. It's like, well, Slay actually had help on this one. Or Slay was able to play off and play the deep ball because he had this linebacker that was going to take anything, you know, uh, short or intermediate, right? right? So there's a lot of times these star wide receivers, they're not playing against one person. They're playing against two or three. They're playing against a scheme. They like tried you, doing that again, you know, but it didn't work week one. Yeah. I thought, I, I was surprised Darius locked him up. I just, I was, and I, and I apologized to Darius, and like, I'm glad he's celebrating all week for that. Yeah, well, you know, you have that, and then also you have the quarterbacks as well. Like, mm -hmm. there's so much more that goes into it. Sometimes it's the quarterback, sometimes it may be the play caller. The play caller could be off. Yeah. I don't think Justin, Justin Jefferson is losing any sleep. I think what, it, what happens is you actually... This is why he's great, because what he'll do is use this for fuel and dominate the next four or five games. Uh, Mike Evans, one game suspension, fair? I, yes, because, and Mike is going to kill me. Oh, boy. Ooh. It's like, like, they've been doing this for how many years? Yeah. Right? I'm sorry, Mike, but I, when I saw this, like, it's not a big deal. But I was like, oh, I can see why the NFL may suspend him. Because it's like, all right, bro, like, you guys fight every single year. Y'all play twice a year. Like, we're tired of seeing this. So I think it's more of the NFL making a statement saying, y'all get y'all stuff together. Y'all can duke it out in between the whistle. But all the extra stuff, y'all need to stop that. Um, I mean, Fitzpatrick was your guy. You, uh, you Ryan. That's your guy. Ryan, yeah. Oh so if somebody goodness. came Biggest at Ryan, if somebody came at Ryan, like, what happened with Brady out there, what would you do? I... I Listen, see, people always like, B. Marsh, man, he was out there, he's so aggressive, he's so, like, I didn't say that, intense. I'm just asking you. I know, but people would think, what would you do? people always like, man, you know, Brandon, well, how would he react? It's like, I never got a personal foul uh, uh, penalty, well, I got one. You know, I never, I always played within the rules because I was playing the long game, like, I wanted to finish the game. I would have, I would have tried to step in and separate it. I wouldn't have fought, but if he had put, if they put their hands on Fitzy, yeah. He didn't put his hands on Fitzy. If he puts his hands on Fitzy, okay. Oh, I'm jumping in. You're there. jumping in there. Me and uh, Eric Decker held out for Fitzpatrick. It was a legendary, one of the most legendary holdouts. What happened? Talk to me. They wouldn't pay. The Jets wouldn't pay Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah. After that magical year that we had, and Eric Decker and I, Coach Bowles is our head coach. We said we're not coming back, Coach Bowles, <gasps> until you pay him. So if Ryan holds out, we're going to hold out as well. What is it? It was about a legendary holdout. And we'll, of course, see him on Amazon tonight ahead of the Steelers and the Browns. But He's you're saying, is it man. the relatability? That's the, the, that's the thing? It's the beard. Is Jimmy G Who a relatable like quarterback? A Jimmy G. Jimmy G? Is he, he, is is. he in that category? Is that why people rally around him, those players yeah. at locker room? You saw it, right? Yeah. You know, as soon as he got in, I, I don't know if it was after his first touchdown or whatnot, how the guys rallied around him. Maybe it was after the game. 
and you saw Trent, you saw all the guys just bouncing and pushing him yeah. and loving on him. It's because he's one of the guys. He's relatable. I talked to DeForest Buckner. We'll have that interview tomorrow. He, of oh, course, wow. you, 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 he was on the team that went to the yeah. Super Bowl. And Jimmy, he says he has a switch, and he just turns it, and he becomes this leader mm -hmm. and this sort of general out there. And I'd never heard that about Jimmy G. Uh, Brandon, thank you for being here. This is awesome. Do you want to stay after the break for a second, maybe? If you I want don't me know. to. Look I at this set. To Look at this. <laughs> the whole time. Uh, but we will be back after this. I think Charlie Batch is joining us, and we've got lots to get to because this game is tonight. When I show up, y'all get no shot, no shot, uh, yeah, yeah. We on fire, we gon' show out. Make it pop like a tire, we gon' blow out. It's go time, go, go time, go time. When I show up, y'all get no shot, no shot, yeah, it's go time. Hours from now, a little Thursday night football action. Browns versus Steelers division rivalry under the lights. I'm saying it's a must-win game. Brandon Marshall's saying, easy there, toots. It's a long season. Week three? I don't know. They both had coming, you know, bad, bad losses. Players only meetings after two weeks? Come on. <laughs> this is a must-win game. They have a sense of urgency. Yeah, let's get You to... never know what can happen in this season. It's so long. Guy goes down. Yeah. You never know. Should we bring in a friend of yours? Let's do it. OK. NFL career spanning 15 years as a quarterback for the Detroit Lions and the Pittsburgh Steelers, two-time oh, Super Bowl gee. champion, currently the Steelers radio analyst at 102.5 in Pittsburgh, Charlie Batch. Welcome to Up and Adams. One of the best. Hey, good morning. How's everyone? Good. You two just saw each other? What's what? This is the OG, Charlie Batch. I know, but like, I, I mean, you... it, he's like NFL royalty. It doesn't matter what cities he's in, what organization. Everybody loves Charlie. It's so true. Charlie, yeah. we love having you here. We know it's a busy day for you. Hours from now, big rivalry in the AFC North in prime time. What are you looking at? What do we need to be looking at for this one? Well, all eyes are going to be on the offensive side of the ball. There's been a lot of rumblings this week as it related to Mr. Trubisky and what he's bringing to the table, and especially the flexibility of what he has at the line of scrimmage as far as audibleizing. So this is an important game. And I heard, know you're talking about you know, whether or not this is a must-win game, but I really feel it is only because Mitch has to figure out a way to get to two and one. If for whatever reason they don't get this win tonight and you have 10 days before they get ready for the Jets at Akershore Stadium next week, you better believe Steelers Nation will be clamoring for Kenny Pickett. Okay, so, OG, you talked about Kenny Pickney. 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 Pickett. 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 Kenny Pickett. Sorry, excuse me. So you talked about him. Is it a must-win game for Mitch because you have this guy sitting there? Kay and I was talking about him. You know, is Coach Tomlin going to pull the trigger on this guy, or is, or is he going to have his hand stand steady and ride out Mitch because he has the experience? What do you see happening if they don't win this game? Yeah, I think well, you have to go on Mike Tomlin's word because he said uh, Mr. Trubisky is going to be his guy mm -hmm. moving forward. So you never want to be a quarterback that's looking over your shoulder. And unfortunately, this is what's happening right now. We all know the politics of this game. When you have a first rounder, you're just keeping the seat warm for whenever that guy is ready to go. So this is important. This is an important game for Mitch because it's a national game. Everybody will be focusing and watching what happens at this particular point. So I hope it doesn't get to that point. I hope we never see Kenny Pickett this year. But and I if hope. we don't, that because Mitch is playing very well. So I just think it's just something right now. I'm really unsure as far as what Mike Tomlin is going to do, only because he never had to make this decision. He had Ben Roethlisberger for all of his career. Right. So this is, a, this is an important step for him. It's true. And why, why bring out the rookie? when he's not going to be protected well. That's right. my thing. And that's the situation with Mitchell. And I hate, I, I like Mitchell Trubisky, but he's kind of like the sacrificial lamb and he's going to have to go get take his licks because tonight it's Miles Garrett, as we know. He leads the NFL with 12 quarterback pressures. I don't need stats to tell you how crazy yeah. he can be. And the offensive line is probably going to struggle to protect Trubisky, and that's, Charlie, my big fear. Well, I agree with you. I agree with you there because Art Rooney made it a point two years ago to talk about improving the running games, that Steelers owner. And then they made a move with Najee Harris last year mm -hmm. in the first round. Here you are now trying to improve the offensive line, but yet you're not seeing productivity right now. Najee Harris only has 72 yards. When you compare that to over 200 yards for uh, with the Browns running game and what they're doing on their side, you're just like, what's going on in Pittsburgh? So this is something that really is unprecedented. We know the defense, they're playing well, minus T.J. Watt. But it gets to the point the offense have to complement the defense. And right now, it's not happening at all because if the defense realizes that they don't score when they're on the field, it's going to be tough for that offense to possess in that time of possession. So, so Charlie, one of the things that make the Pittsburgh Steelers great, right, is just the continuity and just the philosophy, right, and the consistency from 
ownership all the way down to the equipment managers. The zone blitz, it's been in the, the Steelers family for forever. And like you said, run the ball. I grew up in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. so I understand this whole culture. But outside looking in now, uh, Charlie, I feel like the strength of this offense is the wide receivers. And it's like this broken philosophy almost where it's like, yo, we're going to continue to play what we play on defense. Offensively, let's get back to the Steelers ways where we're pounding the rock. But when you look at it and you have these dog receivers out there, it's like, why aren't we using the wide receivers more? And you see, you know, guys starting to chirp. You see Mitch saying, I got to get my playmakers the ball. Do you see conflict there within the organization? It's like, how do we leverage the stars that we have? Well, I mean, I, I really thought the receiving core would get off to a better start. But I think right now, because of the lack of the running game right now, mm -hmm. Matt Canada's offense is, pre is predicated by literally the play-action game. And when that's not happening right now, that's frustrating. So there's a the lack of opportunities down the field. I thought George Pickens coming in here, he looks every bit of a first-round pick, even though they picked him up in the second. I thought he would compliment Chase Claypool. I thought he would compliment Deontay Johnson. Those things aren't happening. And when you come into a game and you're starting to talk about those rumblings, you know what the first 10 to 15 plays are going to be. So when you don't score and you're not producing in those first 10 plays, it gets frustrating. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I guarantee you, you know, B Marsh, when right. you're a quarterback and you're sitting there, you, your top receiver comes to you, regardless of what those top 10 to 15 plays are, always those whispers happen. Hey, I'm going to be open on the other right. side. <laughs> Look for your boy. That's right. That's what's happening what right did he now. Say? What did George say? I was open 90% of the time. <laughs> 90% of the time. So I'll the let whole... you know. <laughs> on one side, Mitch is hearing, I'm open 90% of the time, and right. you just paid Deontay Johnson. On the other side, hey, get me the ball. And then what's Chase Claypool doing in the middle there? So well, there's you, a lot of frustration there. You heard what Clay said. Clay this offseason with us said, listen, I believe I can be a top three wide receiver. All these guys, they want the ball. Like, I understand the Pittsburgh way. Let's run the rock. That's the philosophy of running. they can run the rock. Like, they, I think it's, I, I've seen this totally differently, mm -hmm. maybe than both of you. The defense is a huge problem. They're going to have a really big trouble containing yep. Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt because they don't have T.J. Watt. Najee is the key to this whole game. Yeah. Najee is Mitchell. Trubisky's savior. It should completely, the offense should be focused around Najee Harris, but it can't be because he has this Liz Franck injury, injury that nobody right, wants right, to talk right, about. Right, right. He's limited. He's not 100%. That's why the offense is spiraling, in my opinion. And I don't know if they can get the ball to them because of the offensive what, line. My thing is, if you have a dog wide receiver, and Charlie, correct me if I'm wrong, Kay, Which correct Which ones, me if I'm wrong. who are you talking about on that offense? Like any offense. If you Deontay? have a dog, yeah, but, but no, they have, so you have a dog wide receiver or you have a phenomenal group, right? It could be okay. two wide receivers and a tight end. It could be a receiver and a tight end. It could be three wide receivers. They have that, right? They also have a young tight end that is, that is kind of special. You can actually open up the run game, help out this struggling offensive line, struggling running back who's dealing with this Liz Frank injury and and get the seems to be even bigger because you got these receivers that go out there. You throw a, a, a hitch route outside or okay. a screen outside, Charlie, the guys pick up 10, they pick up 15. That's an extended run, right? If you got back shoulder to clay pool, what, do you, what has to happen? That safety now has to get out of the box, go over top of him. So what does that do? It makes it easier for the offensive coordinator, makes it easier for the offensive lineman and the running back. So I actually think to get to the run game, they should be very intentional in their smart pass plays because that will open up everything. We'll see if it happens tonight, Charlie. Uh, you know, are we South Parking this thing? Blame Canada? Is that the, that's the kind of, <laughs> I mean, that seems to be like what's going on on Twitter, I'm sure on local radio, which you're a huge part of. Is that what it comes down to on offense? Well, it starts there only because he's calling the plays. But to your point, Najee, I do, I just, to me, I just don't feel like he is 100%. The, from the first day of pass, he's that's not. when he injured his foot. He did not have the opportunity to go through training camp. We, did, we just became recently aware of it was the Liz Frank injury. So now, to me, it just doesn't seem like he has that burst as he now is looking to get to that next level. That's just something I'm going to continue to pay attention to. But quite frankly, playing that position, this is something that he's going to have to manage throughout the entire year. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it gets better and doesn't get any Miles, worse. Miles Garrett versus Mitchell. Who you got in this one, Charlie, before we let you go? Well, I mean, I, I'm going to have to go with my Steelers right I now. Like I it. think they figure out a way to scratch and claw right now. This That's is Cleveland and Pittsburgh. And if you, you know, being from Pittsburgh, you know you can't lose to the Browns. And I just don't see that happening in this particular case. This is going to be an ugly game to watch. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a low-scoring game. I do think the Steelers prevail 
in the manner of 16-13, somewhere okay. around there. Steelers have dominated the Browns in this rivalry for years past. We appreciate you, Charlie Batch, for being here. Oh, Brandon gee. Marshall moonlighting as, as the I Am Athlete takeover of our show, which we love. <laughs> and we uh, will be watching that game hours from now, of course, to kick off week three. I want to give you a couple minutes here. You came on the show Friday. We were loving Jalen Hurts. We were talking about the impact of A.J. Brown, how you're one part's A.J. Brown, one part's Mike Evans. We talked about the toughness that he brings to the table. I just want to let you gloat here about this Eagles team that might be Super Bowl bound the way they look right now. Listen, after week 10, just call me, okay? <laughs> okay. Say, Brandon, you said it. Yeah. And you're like, well, everybody's like, what, what, did, what did he say? Well, I'm about to say it now. They'll be 9-1 and one oh. after week 10. They're special. They are. A Super Bowl special? Yes. Yes. Now, I mean, they got a lot of work to do. All these teams do. It's still early. But there's always that one team. There's always that Cincinnati Bengals team. Like, the Cincinnati Bengals made it to the Super Bowl? Yeah. They had a run like this? Are you kidding me? This is, this is that team. If they stay healthy, this team is only going to get better. It's if Jalen can keep passing the ball and look like that consistently, then they will go to the Super Bowl, I think. It doesn't and matter. He it doesn't matter about, like, how they get it done. That's the special thing. They can, he can throw for 300. He can run for 100. Yeah. Right? He can throw it to A.J. Brown. He has 150. You have the other receiver, uh, Devontae, mm -hmm. on the other side that can go for And he got involved yards. last week, and everyone's getting busy. They're, they're not even... Got her. They're not even in mid-season form yet. Some teams hit it the first couple of weeks. Some teams, it takes five or six. Or you don't want to hit it too early, though, That's is true. always the thing. You don't That's want, true. like you were saying, quickly, where should Odell go? Odell. Go back to the team that... You know where I would love for Odell Giants? to go back to? Go to, the Giants. There's go rumors. to the Giants. There's rumors. Are there rumors? Yes, there's legit rumors that he might go he back there. Never, no, oh, oh, no. He should have never won a Super Bowl? No, I was like, he should have never left, but he went on, and his journey is his journey, and he won a Super Bowl. If he didn't leave, he wouldn't have his he Super Bowl. He showed up, hanging but out I like with him Landry. in New York. Why? I like Odell in New York, because Odell's like bigger than life. You need to be in a bigger than life city. So LA can work. Go LA back works to LA. for him. I like him in LA. Yeah, he'll go back to LA. But I would love to see him back. I want him in, in Green Bay. Blue. Green Bay? Hell yes. That makes the most sense from a football standpoint. And fun. Just fun. fun. Like, like, I love Aaron Jones, mm -hmm. and I love A.J. Dillon. Did you see him in Buffalo? Aaron Rodgers and Odell. Yeah, but then it's like one of those, I don't like those super teams as much. He was hugging it up the, with Tom Brady. You saw that? I, yeah, I know. You think but, he... but Brady brought in Cole Beasley. Brady's a whole other mess of worms. Yeah, but like, hold on. Here's the other thing we need to understand about Odell. I don't think Odell's going to come back for another six to eight weeks. Yeah. Right? Like, I think he's taking his time. But I cheer for him. I want him to have the best. Yes. And my, when he left that Super Bowl, I thought they were toast. Yeah, I know. And then OBJ. he got his win. OBJ, we yeah, come you. on the show, OBJ. He's, he's in always LA. in LA. Has he ever come on I Am Athlete? No, he keeps telling me, um, not yet. Wow. But he'll come to on your show for us. We need to get Jay Cutler in Adams. studio next time with uh, Brandon Marshall. <laughs> Eric Weddle is joining our show after this. Weddle, say what up to Brandon Marshall. What up? That's good, babe. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> we drafted the same year. I love you. Uh, we I love what family. We're all family here. We'll be back. Wow, Brandon Marshall was incredible. Charlie Batch, we appreciate you getting us set for some Thursday Night Action. And the guests keep coming here as they do on Up and Adam somehow. Please tweet us at Up and Adam Show. My dad just texted me in Polish. Legenda Chicago Bears. So cool about Brandon Marshall because my dad doesn't even like football. But of course, he remembers the great Brandon Marshall doing work with Jay Cutler and Ash on Jeffrey out there at Soldier Field. Uh, let's bring in a guy who joins us. He's part of our family. Safety in the NFL for 13 seasons with the Chargers. The Ravens and the Rams, two-time All-Pro Super Bowl champion, the one with the drop-top thing, kind of like the cat, whatever you call it, the Super Bowl ring, that's crazy. Eric Weddle, how are you? Okay, what's going on? Had, had a, some great company on the show today with B. Marsh, man. We had, I remember B. Marsh was like the original uh, monster at wide receiver. Yeah. I mean, he was he was incredible, so fun to compete against, and Did what you a ever great personality. Up What's that? Did you ever go out? Go, I know you guys got drafted the same year. Did you ever line up against him? Yeah, I mean, he was in Denver my years in San Diego. So we we had many of battles, uh, many tackles, and a lot of laughs uh, amongst our years together. It was it was always good times playing against one of the best. There's no one like him in the NFL yeah. right now. It's like it, it, A.J. Brown, there's shades of that, and then a little Mike Evans as far yeah, as body he's... type, but the toughness, all of that. He's incredible. What he's doing off the field is great, too. Oh, man, uh, he's a star. Yeah, we, so we had him on the show today. Yesterday, we had one of your ex-teammates who says you're one of his best <laughs> friends. Woody. <on laughs> <the program. laughs> Danny Wood had very 
loving towards you. He referred to you as family. Yeah, Woody's, Woody's one of What's my guys. Yeah, here we go. To be your cat for that major. Mm, Who yeah. would it be and why? It would be Eric Weddle. <laughs> 100% it would be Eric Weddle because so he gets me he's a brother like he's he's literally family to me and and then he also knows my golf game so he'd pick you to be his caddy what is the key to your relationship and what do you make of him wanting you to do that for him man I mean Woody and I go back we we instantly clicked when he came to San Diego I remember when he was on the Patriots he was on the kickoff team I was on kickoff return and literally, we were, I was trying to block him on kickoff return, and we would laugh about those plays throughout the game, and then we'd go off our separate ways. And then we became teammates, and our kids grew up together. And like you said, I know his game. I know his mentality. He's amazing at golf. We'd have our battles back in the day when we were teammates. Now he's, like, a million times better than me. But I know how to, I know how to get him going. I know, I know what, uh, what makes him click. And, you know, when the pressure's on, he gets better, and it would be an honor one day, hopefully in the U.S. Open next year when he qualifies, that I'll be right by the side, either caddying or behind the ropes cheering him on every hole. That's amazing. Yeah, that's what I said. I said, let's manifest this and say you do yes. qualify, and it'll look something like this. Like, look, no we doubt. have a little, this is a good look, Eric. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be right there, baby, whatever he needs. He needs to pick up his divots, I mark it, grab his bag, whatever. Man. Yeah, I don't think he's going to pick me because I don't even know what a driver was yesterday. He was so unimpressed Gosh. with that. I'll ask you this because uh, if it's you and Danny and you guys need to force him, I would just like to know what other two NFL players would round that out. Oh, gosh. Do we want good players or? I don't know. Uh... I mean, Big Wit is always, he's a stud and a joy to be around, so he would be fun. And uh, maybe uh, Adam Thielen. Uh, wow. You know, he's been at Tahoe every year, and he's, he's awesome. So we, we've, we've connected a few times, so he'd be fun to join. So you're the only defensive player. Yeah, I mean, obviously not a lot of DBs get out there. Patrick P gets out there a little he bit, does. but he's he's he he's thinks he's much better than he actually is on the course. Uh, <laughs> I know Nate you know, Burleson. Of, I remember told me that that Patrick took him out on the course, and it was really serious. Yeah. Oh, he's he he gets after it now. <laughs> like it's it's almost life or death with him on the course. Like he he's all in, which I'm m much rather lax and want to have a good time. I'm not really worried about. Oh, how good I'm shooting when it's not no money's on the line. I love that. So let's go from the course to the field. Week two, week three starts tonight. Some really good choice. Mwah. Chef's kiss defensive performances. Did mm. anyone stick out to you? Yeah, I mean, geez, it's got to be the Jaguars doing what they did to the Colts. Josh Allen. It's 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 hard hard enough to to play great defense in this league with the rules and the passing game and the sophistication that that is being run offensively, but. To be able to shut out a team, let alone the Colts, a division game, who honestly I've had, I thought w would be a lot better than what they are right now and what they've shown over two weeks. I know it's a long season, but golly, to get shut out uh, is just not good and is super impressive. There's my boy D. Lloyd right yeah. there with the pick, uh, Utah U. So <laughs> you got to, uh, anytime a defense shuts out an NFL offense, you got to give them props, give them love. And uh, they got a tough challenge this week at the Chargers, though. They do. And so, you know, and, and Indy has a huge challenge, too. They're facing the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. So we'll uh, see what not, they can do. They're looking after 0-3 right down the barrel. If anyone can bring them out, I know it's, it's Frank and, and that crew, but... Not a good start by those Colts. Not good at all. Uh, I sat down with DeForest Buckner. We're going to show that interview tomorrow. And there's there's a leader in the locker room who knows what it's like to go and play in a Super Bowl. And he's he has some things to say about that team. He was really frustrated after that loss. Mm. He swore. DeForest Buckner swearing. I never thought that I'd hear. Uh, let's oh, talk gosh. about your old team, the Ravens. Uh, simply, what is going on with the secondary? Well, they're, you know, they've had they've had some injuries. Uh, over the last season and then getting those guys back, getting the continuity, getting practice reps, and then getting game reps. Then you're infusing some young guys, some new guys, some some guys that that just got to the team. So it's a recipe that if you're not uh, had those screws tight, that big plays happen. And that's just the, exactly what happened. They outplayed the Dolphins. 
everyone's on the Dolphins bandwagon. I'm not sh- too sure to be jump on that real quick. Do I think they're better than last year? But do I think they're upper echelon team in this league? Not yet. And, yeah. and I think the Bills will show that uh, this upcoming week. But it, when you're not communicating, you're not 100% on cue with your defense, especially the secondary, uh, disaster awaits. And it's unfortunate to give up a lead the way the offense played and the way the defense played throughout the game. I mean, up 35-14 at the start of the fourth to give that game away. And obviously the Dolphins had a lot to do with it, but a couple of those touchdowns are unacceptable. And, and they know that. They'll harp on it and coach that up and get the get the communication right. And they'll be, they'll be better from it, but – you don't want to look back at the end of the season and say that's the game that held us out of a, a two seed or a four seed or even held us out of the playoffs. It would yeah. be real unfortunate. I thought this was a per- – you know, I, I was trying to be a good teammate as we're trying to get to know each other, and I was, you know, trying to lob you a real easy – they don't have Wink Martindale anymore. <laughs> that's, thing. They and definitely don't, but – no, you know, to change is good. Change is good. Wink need to change. Uh, the Ravens wanted to change, and, and that's all right. That's the NFL. Yeah. You know, everyone, very rarely do you stay with the same team, and as we all know that. Mike, Mike McDonald's in there now, and, and he'll do a good job, and Wink's doing a great job in Giants. Look, listen, Giants are 2-0 and because of Wink. Yeah. It might be the, the best addition of any franchise, player or coach, for what he's doing with the Giants defense over there. Mm, okay, we co- we cooked up a new segment here on the show. We're debuting <laughs> yeah. something new. That between you and my awesome producers, I have the best team yeah. here. They no were so- doubt. Marissa McBride, Brian Barton, so excited about this one because you are known as one of the grittiest players to ever play in the NFL. So they sat here yesterday and thought, what can we do? And they came up with the grit list. The grit, wow. the grit list. Here we go, starting out. Are we starting the club? Oh, yeah. I mean, we got Travis Kelsey. Of course, he catches the ball. He's cutting across the grain. He's thinking he's going to score. And here comes D- Derwin James, ah! one of the most explosive athlete safeties, one of the best to do it. Comes in there, puts his shoulder, coils his hips, and just body slams Kelsey right here. <laughs> Kelsey, you're my boy, but golly, man. We've all been body slammed and we've all been trucked, but that's one of the top plays I've, I've seen in a long, long time. All right, and what else is on the grit list? We got Swift right here coming out of the backfield. The fact that, that he slips, falls, gets back up, and jukes the basically the entire team of the of the Washington Redskins. I mean, what are we doing here? <laughs> Defensively, can we get some leverage and angles? But that's that's just explosiveness. That's grit. That's the want to. Look at him hug up his teammates. You're talking about just a, a natural athlete, not not getting the down. Hey, I'm gonna get up and score anyways and juke half the team while I'm doing it. <laughs> Last one. <laughs> We got it. Ravens, Hamilton, right over here. These are the plays. It's teach tape, shoulder, led with the shoulder. We can't really hit anymore as defensive players, so you got to do everything by the book. But to have an opportunity, you very rarely get these blow-up shots. And to be in the right position to uh, go smack a, a little running back in the in the flats and, and make him pay Edmonds, yeah, he's, he's going to be thinking about that all week. Okay, so let's review. This is the inaugural grit list. Derwin James <laughs> body slam. DeAndre Swift, what are we doing here? That's what we got out of Eric Weddle there. And then Kyle Hamilton's forced fumble. So this is a working list that we're going to update every week. And it'll start yes, tonight because that it. was week two. I think we might we, we might let you keep one on the grit list, but you're going to have to remove them and update it with plays yeah, from the I given like that. week. See if it takes over the top seed. I like that. It's going to be hard. Love I don't it. know. You don't like making decisions, though. So I uh, You know. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just too nice. I got too big of a heart at times and not enough at other times. It's so true. So here's what we need. We need people who are watching this game. And there should be some gritty plays tonight. This should be a, like yes. a low-scoring, gritty situation. Yes. Uh, yeah. Let us know. Hit us Send up. Send them in. At Up and Adam. Send them in. And we'll sort of uh, be, have you judge. Maybe it's a Minka Fitzpatrick play. Like, bring mm. on the grit for... Wouldn't surprise me he can make another pick six tonight. Oh. Not, not putting that into the universe you are amazing <laughs> thank you for stopping by and go uh Anytime. you know what are you doing mopping floors today separating the whites from the colors what's on the docket uh what do i got i gotta get my uh, play sheet ready for our game on saturday got pickup duty at 12 25 with my two little girls uh i got you know watching them my, my wife's going to the padre game with some friends so i'm on daddy daycare this afternoon until practice and Watch the Thursday night game when I get home. That's perfect. Good. And you're resorting out, go, looking at Twitter for that grit list. Hey. Thank you so much. Anytime, Kay. Great to see you. Well, you're the best. Well, well, I was so excited to talk about that body slam. And, you know, Jason Kelsey brought it up to Travis Kelsey, and it was a great conversation. you got to listen to their podcast as well. We'll be back with more Up and Adams. What a show. 
Conrad, you're telling me to talk. You talk. Okay, if, I, if I'm the one talking, then we're doing a little Q&K. So we, we, we got to get this thing going right well, now. Well, first of all, we should just let everybody know. We had a whole show planned, and then Brandon Marsh was like, I'll pop by studio, and then was on and so incredible that we now have no show, but it's great. So we're no, gonna... it is great. No, we, no, we, we know, love it. Like too much to talk about. Like you're sweating back there, buddy. I am, I am. I am sweating a little bit. I'm trying to get this whole thing back on the trail. So uh, let's go. Let's go to the first question. Can we put the first tweet up here so for Kay? So these are tweets from what? From, 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 from our uh, fans. From our show. fans. Okay, yeah. yeah, they want to know. So Kay, how long of a rope does Justin Fields have over or under 15 games this season? I'm, I'm confused. What's the other option? What, are you going to go to Trevor Simeon at some point in the season? What, the, the rope is the longest rope of all time. Like, what do you mean? They host the Texans. Maybe they get a win. Maybe they don't. They could lose every game this season. I still think it's Justin Fields. Yeah, you can't do nothing with them, right? What, do you, what, what is the? I don't understand. I don't. I don't. I don't know either. But that's. I guess they, that's what Chicago Bears fans want to know is how fans long are going to boo for Justin Fields, and you want Simeon? Have we not seen that experience before? Come on. I think we have. Let's next take the next question. question. All right, Kay. Do you think Jonathan Taylor will get at least 100 yards in week three against the Chiefs? I mean, God willing. I'm willing this to happen. He's going to need to get 100 yards. Listen, he's not the only running back with a slow start this season. Conrad, as you know, all the stud running backs sort of slow out the gate this year. We're headed to Indianapolis, my friend. We are. You and I. And so they've got the Chiefs this weekend. Won't be easy, but they need to find a way to get the ball in Jonathan Taylor's hands. I completely agree, and they will. You know what? We are going to go to Indy. We're going to talk about that more after this break. Are you leaving now? Okay. I know. Like I'm, I am. A little bit of leading here? I don't know what's going on. Just don't say something inappropriate like you did last time you were on the air. We'll be back. A big one in Cleveland tonight. Steelers come to town. Divisional matchup. You never know what will happen. Miles Garrett likely to be destructive to Mitchell Trubisky and company on that side. I think it all comes down to Najee. Can Najee be the life force? Can Najee play through a Liz Franck injury that is being undermentioned by everyone across the board? That's what it comes down to for me. No TJ Watt. How do they stop the running attack for the Brown side as well? Tough game. We'll see. I will just say it is a, it's a must-win game. Brandon Marshall disagreed with me. Charlie Batch agreed with me. The schedule for both gets gross after week five, and they need a win, both sides, here in week three. Now, I'm headed to Indianapolis right after the show. Uh, I was uh, invited by the uh, Ursay family and by the Colts to help with their Kicking the Stigma event. We're doing a Beyond the Sidelines event talking about mental health. Uh, and if you want to support it, please hit this. We're going to be talking about this tomorrow. If it gets, if we get good donations in the next 24 hours, I will get pied in the face by the Colts mascot. Who doesn't want to see that? We'll see you from Indy tomorrow.